concerns about the way this bill is, is um, looks to address the housing crisis that we face. We do need to address it, but we think the measures that have been taken here, a number of the measures are deeply flawed and actually may lead to a worse planning system, a worse housing outcome. Um, I suppose, first of all, our concern is that the bill is addressing a problem that doesn't particularly exist in our mind. This, this belief that it's the planning system which is holding back housing development, which is stopping us building the houses across this country, I would dispute that. The evidence, I think, is clear in terms of the Irish Planning Institute, I think, estimated that there are 33,000 units already have permission in the Dublin area, and there's another 7,000 in the planning process. So there's no shortage, uh, or the planning system hasn't failed in terms of delivering a, 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 the ability to build. It is problems in our financing, in our development sector, which need to be addressed, and the need for us to start developing ourselves as a state is the way to really overcome the housing crisis. And second, I suppose, a second piece of evidence in terms of why you know there is, this is seeking to address a problem that does not exist. As I understand, 88% of the planning applications made in the Dublin city area are approved within eight weeks. The, the national average, I think, is about 67%. But certainly the city here, where there's the greatest crisis, that again is, there is no evidence that the planning system <coughs> is crucially holding things back. If you talk anecdotally to people involved in the system, they'd often say it's actually part, part of the delay that does occur is because you have a developer coming, maybe puts in a permission, just testing the waters, changing it. It is almost as, as often as not, not necessarily it's not the local communities or the local councillors who are holding things back. It's developers not coming with a fully thought through, a fully um, a plan which is, which is brought in the local community and which is ready to go. Um, and thirdly, uh, we all know that, again, the key issue here in, in terms of lack of shortage of housing is the number of vacant units. Um, and I suppose it just goes back to the central key argument we've been making in recent weeks regarding this whole housing issue, that it is all carrot to the development and construction industry and no stick. And we need a balanced approach. And for the life of me, I cannot understand why this government and the preceding government did not proceed with the site value tax proposals that we had set up in our own time in government that was, there was a problem in terms of immediate introduction of it that we didn't know, our land registry didn't have an accurate picture of who owned what. So we said to the Department of Finance, okay, fix that problem, start doing the land registry work, start working out who owns what. They started that process. I understand, and I'd love to hear from the Minister if, if I'm wrong in this, that that work is now done, which would allow us to introduce a site value tax, which would be a measure of actually putting the pressure across the board in all developers to, to, to use the, the existing property and to use existing development sites in an effective, efficient way. 